Welcome to Tale and Vision. This is Victor and today I will be speaking about painting miniatures. Um, if you've seen the previous episode of The Life of a Dragon, you might have met with this little guy. Who is a clockwork dragon. And uh, in that episode he got unboxed. And this miniature is the first miniature which I ever painted. At least fantasy miniature. So um, you can see that uh, compared to the <laughs> previous state of this dragon it's much more colorful and I'm feeling very satisfied with uh, how it looks. So far it only has the base paints on it so um, I will be putting on some shade later on. But before you do that mm -hmm. uh, could you tell what color you use because as you said you have never painted a miniature this detailed before. I never painted a miniature this detailed before so so far I only painted airplanes which is quite easy to paint you paint the top gray you paint the bottom green no nope, upside down you paint the top green and the bottom gray and that's it uh, so this has so many little details it was very much a challenge to paint it really enjoyed it and uh, when I first saw this mini I saw the picture in the back of the box how they suggested to paint it and I was thinking oh wow that looks horribly boring so I wanted to give some colors to the wings and I wanted to give give it a feel which uh, brings more of a more of a patchwork ragtag uh, hardly pieced together dragon which might be created in a goblins workshop so that's why I was using all of these different colors on the wings uh, for the wings, I used uh, two different kinds of blues. This is the blues, the painter blues, yeah. um, which is uh, Thousand Suns Blue and Kalador Sky. Mm -hmm. And question, because these mm -hmm. colors were new for you as well, because the color you used to paint your planes with were oil based. Yeah, they were oil. Oops. <laughs> They were oil based and uh, that means that uh, my whole room was super stinky. It smelled like, like acetone or some other stuff but I used to uh, make my paints thinner. And they didn't really stuck onto the, onto the models as much as I wanted to. With this, I really enjoyed that even a very light color with two layers could uh, paint totally over a dark color. So, for example, I was painting. Oops, I was painting some yellows in the bottom of the dragon. See, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I wanted it to look like if uh, it had a furnace glowing inside it, and I was so happy that uh, with the yellow, I managed to paint over this uh, this silver color. And I don't think I could have ever done that with my previous plane paints. Maybe because they were like 10 years ago <laughs> and they were very old. Um, How the world has changed since then. Yeah. Back in my time the paint was not working how they are working now. Now the paints are covering everything. It is horrible. So Back in the old times we know how to use all of the paints because we needed to paint everything 20 times over. That is how you're developing real talent. Not like with all of these young, expensive, whippersnapper paints. Said Victor, thousand years old. So I take it, I just <laughs> take these colors and remove them and you can paint with your oil colors. Is that okay for you then? Oh, perfect. I like to suffer. Yeah, so I would just take these colors and throw them away. Okay? Okay? No? Also, I didn't mention that uh, the, um, these ones, the yellow ones, mm -hmm. this is the Morgue Hats Bow color. Ooh. All of these paints have uh, very weird names. Uh, it's like every one of them is a fantasy campaign. Besides that, I used three, four different kinds of metallic paints. And these are the ones here, right? Yeah. I used this, these Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel. And for the bronze colors, I used Warplug Bronze and this Balthazar Gold. Um, and so these are two bronze type of colors. Balthazar is lighter and uh, 
Vaplog bronze is uh, darker and these are two silver steel kind of colors and I think the iron hands are lighter and the iron warriors are darker. Mm. I'm not sure. And all of those are base colors, right? Yeah, all of those are base colors. So this dragon only has base colors on the dragon. On the, on the ground, uh, I was experimenting with trying to tilling out a green base color, but it was not working out properly you know, to get into the cracks because as it was drying up, it... Um, it, the paint, the pigment went to the sides of the little puddles, so it was not an even, even shade. So then I picked up this uh, Corelli green shade color, mm -hmm. which is a, which is a shade color, and uh, it was, uh, it was much better because when it was drying, it was dried inside the cracks and not uh, on the outer, outer borders of the puddles. So it worked much better. For the ground I was using this rock art flash, which is theoretically a flash color, but uh, without a layer. It, I think it looks quite nice as a, as a crane for the ground. And uh, I was using a little bit of this Castellian green. Also on the ground? Yeah, was it... this, this was the one which I tried, a base color, which I tried to thin out with water. But it was not working right, so I was using this Coilea green shade. Mm -hmm. So uh, now you have become a bit familiar with the colors and things. Mm -hmm. Well, much more familiar than when I never painted anymore. <laughs> before. So what is the next step? The next step in this will be that um, first I will be going around and fixing little details. Like, for example, I wanted to make the claws the same color as the horns. I imagine that the horns are made out of obsidian and I was using this Incubid Darkness paint for that. And I want to, uh, I want to bring in this color at other parts of the dragon, so, so I will paint, paint the, yeah, the mm -hmm. horns. Not the horns, the claws, mm -hmm. like that. I also will go around and patch up the little mistakes where I went out of the of the panels um, and the colors merge with each other. And after that, I will be fixing the little sewing knots, painting oh, them. They are tiny. Yeah, super tiny. And after that, uh, I'm a bit worried about that. Let's see how it goes. I want to bring in some shades and uh, rust on the dragon. I haven't decided yet how I will be doing it. Over time when I was painting the dragon I realized that it works so much more better if I paint, uh, for example, uh, the dragon with a darker bronze and then give another layer of it uh, with a lighter color because then the dark is already in the cracks. So if I would be painting this dragon again I think I would just give an even dark bronze color and I would paint the light colors over it. Mm -hmm. Right now, most likely, I will be trying to thin out the dark bronze color, try to bring it inside the cracks and uh, then wipe it off. <laughs> Let's see how it works. And uh, later on, I will be trying to put some highlights and scratches on the dragon to show, show some wear and tear. And I will be using this dry brush, which uh, I heard the word dry brushing in one of the tutorial videos which I watched for like five seconds so I was trying to put a little bit of paint onto the brush having it drying a little bit um, so that there's only some very dry pigments on it and after that smudging it all over the bottom layer and it turned out to be quite nice so I think I will be doing that one maybe bringing in some greenish color like what I have in the bottom but with a bit lighter, so um, so it could be like a greenish, rusty patina over the bronze uh, surfaces. Mm. So some shade, some fixing up. Great. Yeah. So uh, if you could rate painting miniatures, what will you give this? Uh, ooh, I think I would uh, give it uh, three pukas out of three. Oh, three pukas out of three. Yeah, I have no clue what this puka, I just heard it today. 
I really hope I'm not bringing in anything weird. <laughs> Before I was thinking that uh, who would have spent, I don't know, two, three hundred krona on buying a, buying a miniature and after that buying lots of little paints and then buying paintbrushes and spending lots of I'm time so paintbrushes. offended right now. So I was thinking that who would have spent so much money and time on this? Then I, when I was doing this, I, I felt that like being a little kid with my paint coloring books and uh, coming up uh, with color patterns, what makes the colors pop and how to combine different aspects, what kind of colors to bring in, for example, to the horns so that it drags in the eye. Also, when I was painting, how to try to reach all of the little surfaces and make it perfect. So uh, I was so surprised at how much I enjoyed this. So there are a few criteria in getting into a happy, positive flow state when I'm working. One of them is to do something that is on the edge of my capability, edge of my challenge. And I felt very much on the edge of my capability when I was painting this. And the other thing is having constant feedback of uh, if I'm doing things right. And with this, I could instantly see how I was covering up the white base color of the dragon and uh, putting more color onto it and how it was coming alive minute by minute. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this. And uh, I also, in the, while I didn't have enough paints to finish the dragon, I started to paint one of Anna's miniatures, which is a uh, sea elf. They call Irunet Deepkin. Let's see if I can focus. Yeah, Irunet Deepkin. I have had an uh, army of these for like three years, but I'm too lazy and too little time. But now they are, they are glued together, they're primed, and Victor started to paint in one minute, and I will paint the rest. So uh, yeah, Victor, I'm, I'm saying you're welcome to get into this hobby. Thank you very much for killing my wallet. You're welcome. First one was free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that was it for today. Mm -hmm. Next episode, you can see the dragon if it will be looking so much more better or ruined totally with my uh, noob shading techniques. Thank you very much for uh, watching and uh, have a great day or great afternoon and great morning wherever you are in the world. Bye bye!